it's my pleasure to introduce Alex Xie, Global Oil and Gas Manager here at DJI Enterprise. Alex has been leading oil and gas drone projects at DJI for more than three years, including intensive collaborations with industry giants Saudi Aramco, Sinopec, and PetroChina. Alex has been the driving force behind DJI's oil and gas initiatives, and it's his vision that has been pushing drone technology to the forefront in improving safety and efficiency for everyone involved. I really can't overstate how much of a privilege it is to have Alex here today. Next up, we have Eli Mosel, CEO of Halo Robotics. Eli and Halo Robotics have been working closely with DJI in Indonesia since 2017, where they have been leading the growing adoption of drones in high-risk environments, including oil and gas and other key heavy industries. Eli has worked closely with many major companies to help them adopt drones and improve safety and efficiency in their workflows, including asset maintenance and management. Today, Halo Robotics is proud to showcase some of their recent projects with Pertamina, Indonesia's national oil and gas company. And last but not least, we have Johannes Sakidi, Managing Director at Halo Robotics. Johannes has a strong background in commercial drone solutions in many industrial sectors and business applications. Insights about the specific ways that drones are contributing Again, some weird, some weird connection issues here, but we'll start out with a brief attendee survey just to get a sense of our audience. And then we'll have we'll Alex start give out an with industry overview the, of DJI and oil and gas. Next, we'll have Eli and Johannes take over to showcase some of Halo's recent solutions for general <laughs> visual inspection and as-built modeling. And then Alex will share DJI's vision for the future of drones in oil and gas, as well as some recent case studies. At the end, we'll have some time for some Q&A. So at any point during the webinar, if you have a question that comes up um, and you'd like to ask that our, our panelists, please feel free to type it into the question box. And I will be monitoring and selecting relevant questions that we'll, we'll relay to our speakers. So very quickly, we we'll put this poll up. It should show up on your screen. So, do you already have a UAV program in place? We'll give you guys a few seconds to just to get a second and to respond. Okay, five more seconds, and I'll move on to the next question.
Okay, next question. How old is your UAV program? Great, we're getting a lot of responses. Give it a few more seconds to enter your response, and then I'll move to the last question. And the last question, how often do you deploy your drones? Just a few more seconds. Okay. So I will now be passing it on to Alex and he will give you an industry overview. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> I'm so glad to be here to share in oil and gas application of DJI. And thank you for Haley Robotic and Padmina cooperate with DJI so that we can share more information about oil and gas today. So let, let me quickly go through about the DJI. And actually DJI is, DJI has more than 50 original offices worldwide and our product have sold to more than 100 countries and regions. And also we founded in 2006 and until right now we have more than 40,000 college and one quarter of our college are engineers. And we also sell out more than what, 10 million drones worldwide. And we have got in research and development more than 14 years on US flight controllers. And we have already got more than 10,000 inventions of aircrafts, data transmission, systems, battery technology, and gimbal technology. And we have the whole industrial chain, including comprehensive R&D, production, marketing, after sales, and even training. For the service part, we have the enterprise shield, including can replacement cover water damage, and insurance can cover a third party loose. And also US training center, we call UTC can write the materials and cooperate with local partner globally to do replacement and deep cleaning maintenance service. And we have already have more than 200 academy in the world and already trained more than 80,000 pilots in the world. So for the oil and gas UAS standard signs, we have already cooperated with American Petroleum Institute and we have published a guide with API last year in DJI Airworks form. So, and also DJI participate in China with China Petro about the UAS workflow standard. And this kind of resource of common re re questions, considerations, and of how to develop or improve a UAS program. And it will be a path for organizations to consider UAS. And it's, it will be the best practice from organization and will be baseline program elements for UAS. So I prefer 
oil and gas sector service provider and system integrator can read this kind of guide. So and DJI has already cooperated with oil and gas industrial company. Um, so most of the overseas company we have already cooperated focus on leak detection and repair application and signed revenue inspection. But most of the Chinese company like Pipeline China, Sinopec, Petro China, they focus in the pipeline inspection and then the ref revenue inspection. So after the past three years, we have analyzed a lot of scenarios in oil and gas industrial. There's a lot of uh, scenario and application we can do and UAS can do, but the main application we need to focus is this what is product revenue management including utility facility inspection leak detection and repair security and digitalization the second senior scenario is pipeline integrity management including the general inspection anti-oil stolen and leak detection and the third main scenario is the construction and exploration we can use drone to do the master plan, supervision, and data acquisition. And there are another additional application such as thickness detection and confined space inspection. So for the facility inspection, as we all know, when using drones, we don't need downtime to inspect the flare and any other tower in our refinery and also we can enhance the efficiency when greatly reduce the time of manual climbing improve the efficiency of inspection and animate blind spots during inspection and finally we can digital storage of, of inspection data and visual presentation for the leak detection sign we can use three kinds of main device like optical gas image device, TD loss technology or and PID electronic uh, technology where we and we have already cooperated with FLIR Alpha solar ability to integrate their device into our drones to be a leak detection solutions. And in the pipeline integrity management side, we involve UAS to this PIM system. We can reduce a lot of risk and I will uh, ensure case study at the end of the day, the um, webinar. And it can also enhance the efficiency when inspect the pipeline. We can also use our drone in general security patrol. It can cover the blind area and reduce security personnel. For the emergency response side, we can use drone to get the ground information like real time 2D or 3D modeling and measure the distance and area in our model. And it can be a aerial surveillance technology to get the live real-time video back to the command center and provide high altitude vision. So we can, after the emergency issue is passed, we can get the on-site analysis and post disaster assessment. And then last application is the UAS detection. As we all know, DJ have the aerial scope technology that can get the remote detection and detect and arrest the real-time monitoring records and playback data analysis. And this kind of solution can support integration. It has the software development kit and allow the private cloud install. 
So let me pause the screen sharing to align to share more solution details. Oh, sorry about that. I think I was muted earlier, so I just wanted to quickly um, quickly introduce myself. My name is Eli Moselle with Halo Robotics, uh, and today in this presentation, I'll be presenting together with my colleague, uh, the Managing Director of Halo Robotics, that's Johanna Sakidi, um, and we will be talking about some examples of drone applications in the oil and gas industry in Indonesia where we have been working with DJI Enterprise since 2017, not just in oil and gas, uh, but uh, today the focus being on oil and gas is that it's a real bright spot in the industry as uh, the energy industry goes into some very challenging times. I was just seeing earlier today that the oil price is at or below $20 a barrel. Um, so, uh, you know, it's it's one of the things that we want to do on this webinar is not just share some technical examples, but also some positive energy and some optimism that drone technology uh, is really a bright spot uh, if, from our assessment for um, asset ma managers and and maintenance efficiency in, in the industry at a, at a time when optimization is really important. Uh, again, I just also want to say thank you very much to um, to the team at DJI for uh, for inviting us to present some of these case studies and also to all of our colleagues and partners in the oil and gas industry in Indonesia um, who have really made this uh, presentation possible. Uh, so today, I mean, there's there's many different types of drone technology that are out there. I think today what the key the keyword being focused that we are interested to talk about concrete examples that are available uh, and proven. Um, in, in the industry that that would that have been applied in Indonesia um, will we'll, today in the in the presentation we'll go over a couple of key examples and um, I'm actually really excited to share some um, some reference uh, experience directly that was contributed by the team at Pertamina EP asset 3 um, they, they shared a little bit of video insight with us uh, I'll play that before passing it over to Johannes Today's presentation, we'll talk about two key areas, one being inspection, um, and uh, that will be both RGB or zoom camera inspection as well as thermal inspection, and, and we can talk about a few examples of that. That's a very well-proven and very well-established area uh, of drone technology application in the oil and gas industry. But uh, second thing that I think is really exciting, and we'll talk about two different approaches for it in today's uh, webinar, which, are, which is an emerging area that, that we feel uh, great value going to become surely a, a standard part of oil and gas uh, brownfield and greenfield asset management uh, workflows is as-built asset digitalization. So creating a digital twin of, of assets, doing 3D scans and digitalization to um, extract drawings, CAD models, and, and make um, you know, other spatial me measurements. Um, there's there's two things. So when we talk about the application of drones, drones are fundamentally tools to collect data. But uh, one of the things we want to emphasize in the case study examples that we talk about today is the business outcomes. What's the relevance to the actual management of assets in oil and gas? Uh, the key key I think very key point at the time at this time is to reduce costs significantly on maintenance and asset management. And one of the ways that we do this is by improving efficiency, safety, and also the frequency of the inspections. Uh, the use of drones is 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 also changing 
some fundamental workflows in the oil and gas industry. So it, it's really enabling a preventive maintenance approach where uh, we are localizing maintenance, manual maintenance and traditional approaches uh, are still very important, but, uh, but what we're doing is sort of shifting it so that um, you can localize maintenance on specific assets that have already been identified as needing, you know, specific attention rather than, for example, scaffolding an entire asset or doing a global or total inspection of an entire facility. You can actually scan, identify issues with a drone and then more and then greatly, greatly, in many cases, dramatically uh, increase the efficiency of the, the role of manned inspectors and other kinds of technologies. Uh, and then related to that is the data is hugely useful for making decisions in the uh, and oil and gas is famously an industry where the capex decisions or the, the capital expenditures are very big. We'll go over some examples today where you know the decisions related to the asset can easily be 10, 15 million dollar decisions, if not greater than that. So um, what, by having access to it's it's very simply having access to clear information, a clear understanding of the asset allows you to make these decisions um, better and, um, you know, greatly directly reduce cost. Uh, and then also we can, over time, systematically repeat these scans and inspections, oftentimes following the same identical flight path or collecting the same identical set of data, but at a different time so that you can compare and analyze over time. Uh, talking today, there's about uh, the technology that's involved in the examples. We'll just quick, quickly highlight that the DJI M210 or Matrix 200 series. These are D these are flagship drones by DJI. We'll also talk about the role of Phantom 4 RTK. Uh, the Phantom 4 is is just a very well. It's an enterprise flagship drone. And then very exciting is uh, my colleague Johannes will talk about the Emicent hover map and, and UAV LiDAR. Um, Emicent made the first sort of plug and play uh, uh, UAV LiDAR uh, compatible with DJI M600 and M210 drones. And, and um, that's uh, really uh, something that my, my colleague will talk about. Um, it's just some very exciting results there. So just to quickly overview, uh, the DJI M210, it's, uh, it's a very flexible, uh, drone that is uh, now very well established in the oil and gas industry. It's able to carry multiple different types of payloads. So an example uh, and very common use in the oil and gas industry is the Zenmu Z30 zoom camera uh, together with a side-by-side uh, -side with a thermal camera. And just two examples here. One is a high resolution um, shot of an operational asset, which is a flare stack or a flare tip. It's a very common application in the oil and gas industry, hugely um, saving a lot of, uh, of uh, cost and uh, reducing um, you know, some of the other obviously very dangerous inspection methodologies that would otherwise be applied. And then we can also capture thermal, thermal images of that and analyze the thermal images each pixel of the thermal image actually has temperature data stored in it. So we can post-process it later, um, a process called thermography, and actually analyze heat differentials uh, across an asset, which uh, I'll talk about some examples later in, in the presentation. Um, the Phantom 4 uh, is very well known, and the Phantom 4 RTK was an upgraded model that has RTK, PPK capabilities. So it can capture very, very high accuracy 2D and 3D mapping results. That's called photogrammetry, and it's one way of extracting as-built uh, asset information. Um, give you an example about that shortly. And uh, the next thing is uh, another technique for collecting as-built data that uh, we think is very, very exciting at the moment is using UAV LiDAR, and specifically the Emicent hover map, which is um, has some very unique features for these kinds of high risk applications uh, where you're flying around tall electromagnetic structures, high risk assets where safety is a real concern. Uh, the Emicent hover map is, uh, it, it was developed by Emicent to be plug and play with DJI drones. It's the first, uh, it's the first payload uh, to, to do that. And you can sort of easily control it from, it's, it's very user-friendly controlling it from the um, controller using DJI um, flight app. And uh, the, the, the thing about it is it's not just collecting high resolution LiDAR data, but it's also the same 
uh, it's it's lidar and autonomy. So it's uh, this, the the scan is just like computer, just just like human vision, the way that humans use their eyes to localize themselves in three dimensional space. This is the same thing that the payload is is doing. So it's actually allowing the drone to simultaneously, while it is flying, localize itself and and see effectively what it is flying in and around. And so this allows it to navigate uh, independently at, at times and um, avoid obstacles. And and it's another way of um, of ensuring safety when we are flying around high risk assets. And so this is enabling the application of LIDAR in the, in the oil and gas industry, whereas LIDAR is not necessarily unique, but it's, it's never been applied in the oil and gas industry in this kind of way because um, you've just not, not had that combination of factors where the drone can fly safely in and around high-risk assets. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll present a couple of examples here. Uh, the first coherent kind of category of drone applications uh, is general visual inspection. That's a combination of the zoom camera and thermal um, thermal data. And the examples presented here are with Pertamina. And so a huge thank you to the team at Pertamina EP, Pertamina UTC, PHM uh, for, for making uh, this available and allowing us to share some of these exciting results today. Uh, like as, as Alex mentioned, and, and like I mentioned before, um, you know, flare inspections is is one of the examples uh, that um, here's here's uh, asset three uh, uh, in uh, a Pertamina asset in Java, and um, an example that you know we're clearly flying very far away from the asset, as you can see on the bottom left, um, from you know maintaining safe distance. The drone as well is not flying over any assets. It's not flying over people or property, but it's still able to obtain um, very high proximity results. Uh, it's it's a very, it, you know, as amazing and transformative as it is, it's also important to mention that this is a very straightforward application. It's a straightforward flight. Um, it's really not that complicated to actually obtain this kind of imagery, and I think that's also part of the power of emphasizing uh, the power the power of DJI technologies. Is it's it's very advanced, and 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 the the results are hugely relevant. But it's not necessarily that complicated to actually conduct a safe and effective operation to obtain this kind of imagery, and um, and then make decisions about the asset after that. Earlier, I mentioned the the power of a zoom camera, and this is just a great example that highlights that this is a 500 meter distance, uh, clearly not flying over people or property. We're we're on very safe proximity away from the asset, but able to nonetheless obtain uh, quite high resolution results. I wouldn't quite say, I mean, just just for those out there, you know, I wouldn't say that this is like inspection grade. Uh, photo or imagery, uh, we would still want to obtain a more high resolution result than this. So, but uh, what is really cool is, you know, just to showcase the power of this NUZ30 zoom camera and some of the some of the the sensors that the DJI is producing is is that you really can, um, you know, zoom from a great distance and still obtain a very useful and important result. So, you know, most of our inspections, the standoff is you know, less than 80 meters. Uh, so you can imagine that the results only get better as you get closer. This is an example, you know, of uh, another asset, um, brownfield aging asset, where my colleague Johannes will go over this in a little bit more detail with a LIDAR application. But Pertamina, this is a real use case where the team at Pertamina is currently making a decision how they are going to overhaul maintenance on this tank. Um, it's a, it's obviously a big tank. It's in fact the second largest tank in Indonesia, and it's a crude oil bulk storage tank. And um, so the, you know, the the decisions that are made around uh, how to maintain and what to replace on this asset are obviously going to be big budget decisions. Pertamina asked us just to do a quick inspection just to support this dis decision making process. So we're, it was just a quick flight to check the condition of the shell and some of the ancillary safety systems that are surrounding it, just to get an idea of what would need to be replaced or how they were going to uh, approach this, what would the scope would be for contractors. So here's an example, 45 meter distance. We're looking at a foam chamber here that's uh, going 
in the case of any kind of fire emergency, this would be uh, where the foam is stored and some of the piping that is surrounding it just uh, that would dispense um, foam in the in incident of any fire. So just checking the state of those ancillary systems. Uh, also, you know, using the Zenmu ZXT, uh, that's the FLIR payload, the thermal infrared payload, we're able to do a quick check just to evaluate the dissipation of heat across the shell. So in this case, you know, Pertamina is deciding, well, you know, do we need to replace the whole shell or how are we going to replace that? Are we going to pad it in a certain way? Um, to what extent does it require maintenance? And so we're just checking using radiometric thermal data uh, easily obtained by the drone to, uh, to, to, to help those kinds of decisions. Another uh, example here, uh, also very, very interesting, a different asset, also maintained by the team at Portamina Asset 3. Um, and this is to, this is related, this is the A-mine cooling, cooling uh, facilities for an A-mine stripper. Um, it's a very large, uh, large gas processing facility in Java. And um, we're focusing on an inaccessible place, which is, you know, from the top, the roofing. And if you look on the left, it it it, it clearly looks like it's in fine condition. Uh, however, we look on the right from a thermal perspective, we can see that there, you know, even just looking at the colors without making any further measurement, we can see that there's some kind of anomaly or, you know, uh, asymmetry going on here. So then we subsequently can measure that and actually ascertain what is that differential and to what extent. Uh, is it meaningful? Is it possible that there is some de-bottlenecking that might be required? Uh, and and what can happen here is that now Pertamina is in a position to share this information with a contractor and, and give them specific instructions uh, for a local inspection to determine what's going on here and um, more efficiently uh, maintain uh, from there. So uh, very, very good, you know, examples of quick, uh, quick inspections to ascertain something for further investigation at, and, and localize the inspection results. So now moving on and, and talking about as-built, and this is an area where we think this, it, it's an exciting area of unfolding uh, business value for oil and gas asset integrity management. And the technique that I'm gonna talk about is photogrammetry, and my colleague Johannes will talk about LIDAR more specifically on the tank that I mentioned earlier. So photogrammetry using the Phantom 4 RTK here, um, you know, it's a standard workhorse enterprise drone. The results that I'm talking about, I'd just like to say a quick thank you to the team at Link Terminal. This is a downstream oil and gas facility uh, tank terminal in Chilagon, which is an industrial area outside of Jakarta, um, 26 tanks and um, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about the working method of how we scan this asset, produce a 2D and 3D map, and some of the value applications that this has for Link. Uh, so the key working methods here is it's it's two mapping flights using the Phantom 4 RTK. This is uh, PCGS Pro, which is the, the ground control software that comes with the drone. And this uh, allows us to do a systematic flight where we're taking photos and capturing imagery data in a systematic way with a certain amount of overlap and side lap. In this case, 80% overlap, 80% side lap. That's quite a lot, but in this case, you know, it's a small area. The key objective is to maximize accuracy. So lots of overlap and side lap. We also added eight ground control points. So these are called GCPs. They are accuracy references um, that, uh, in short, they are just markers that that are additional markers that we place around the site that uh, because they stand still and are stationary, they don't move unlike the drone. So, so these GCPs over time are able to acquire a very high fixed uh, GPS accuracy. Um, and we later will take those GPS reference points, as you can see on the top right here, uh, we'd later stitch that into the data afterwards to increase the overall net total accuracy or what's called absolute accuracy of the data. And the total time for this operation on site is, is four hours. And that actually includes setting the GCPs, which takes the most amount of time. And the mapping flights are very quick. Setting GCPs takes a little bit longer as we walk around the site, lay lay these sort of uh, physical objects throughout the site and wait for uh, a little while while they acquire a good you know fixed position with the satellite 
I'll show you some of the results here. Really, really cool. Um, 2D and 3D photogrammetry results uh, that, you know, the, I think the spec sheet from DJI, Fan, you know, Phantom 4 RTK is sub five centimeter accuracy with good conditions. And in this case, we definitely see that the, the results exceeded those specs quite a bit. Uh, so when we talk about accuracy, 3D accuracy, you're talking about XYZ uh, axes. X and Y are both horizontal measures where we see there's one to four centimeter absolute accuracy. That means accuracy, not just of the objects between things in the actual hypothetical mapping world, but actually absolute accuracy refers to the, the real GPS accuracy on the actual planet Earth. And so what was really cool here and something I want to highlight is the Z accuracy, vertical accuracy, typically a little bit more challenging to get good accuracy you from you when you're taking photos from above you know getting vertical you know horizontal accuracy is one thing but getting elevation accuracy uh is sort of quite another and what was really cool here is that we were able to obtain a very high level of vertical accuracy and that's important for asset integrity management in oil and gas where we really need the the the, the assets are definitely three-dimensional and and real asset managers will need um 3d data so that's really cool. I'll show you, this is a, a, the examples of the 3D results. Um, so a, a 3D photogrammetry result. And I'm just gonna allow a little bit of time for this to buffer, um, affording for connection speed. And then shortly after this, I'm gonna show you a 2D photogrammetry result and what can be extracted from that in terms of business value. So this is a 2D photogrammetry result using the DJI Phantom 4 RTK. Again, pretty straightforward operation here. And um, this is the 2D, 2D data output. In and of itself, maybe not necessarily interesting for business managers, but here is what we can do with it, which is we can take that GeoTIFF file, which the which the a data file that the Phantom 4 RTK you know, will produce mapping file in this format, we can throw that into ArcGIS, which is another software tool, cross-compatible with a lot of spatial data, very commonly used by, uh, you know, in the oil and gas mining, agriculture industries, and then extract an as-built um, schematic from, from that map. And the as-built model is actually, and the as-built schematics are, are hugely useful for, um, for link terminal. Uh, in this case, we understand that they are, considering expanding their facilities and purchasing some of the neighboring property to expand the tank terminal facilities. So in this case, they really do need to understand what's, what you know, and any contractors that are involved in planning out and engineering the design uh, for this expansion project will need to understand what's the current state of affairs and the as-built model uh, at the uh, current site. How does everything work together? Um, you know, where's the fire safety, uh, you know, system and how is that installed and uh, how is the pipeline network installed and how does that connect to the shipping terminal? So all of that can quickly be captured by an as-built model. And this is really going to increase the act, the efficiency for Link in terms of communicating and, and discussing with the contractors about what to do. And also, um, you know, something that Link in and of itself, even without an expansion project, can use in the long term is is that um, you know oil and gas is a long term industry where people get return on investment over you know 10 15 20 30 years so you know the assets can change quite a bit maintenance can go on and then you know 20 years from now um, it you know in the absence of this kind of information it's not possible to compare what's been done to the asset over time so with this kind of um, blueprint the schematic that uh, it also has long-term value for link that they can uh, 10 years from now you know when they go to do an, a maintenance overhaul on some of these tanks that they can compare back to a certain point in 2020 where what the asset how it was laid out at that time so this is very very useful um, information and, and really increases efficiency for both brownfield asset management as well as any potential new greenfield projects that might be related to this. So 
Um, that's just a quick summary. I've talked about so far general visual inspection using Zoom as well as thermal data. And uh, I've given you an example of as-built photogrammetry application to extract the 2D, 2D schematic. Um, now going into three-dimensional uh, application and featuring the Emerson hover map. My I'll pass it over to my colleague Johannes to talk about that. Uh, but but before doing that, um, really, really grateful to the team from Pertamina AP who have shared with us a little bit of their uh, actual field experience applying drones. We've done a project with them in 2018, 2019, and also 2020. And um, very, very enthusiastic to share a little bit of video here uh, and a quick thank you to the team at Pertamina. So I'm just going to share with you now. This is Pa'ata. Biasanya kegiatan inspeksi dan perawatan membutuhkan teknologi rope access dan juga scaffolding yang memakan waktu cukup lama dan juga biaya yang tinggi. Dengan menggunakan teknologi drone, kami dapat mendapatkan data yang detail dengan peningkatan signifikan terhadap kecepatan dan ketepatan hasil. Data visual dan spesial yang kami dapatkan akan sangat membantu kami dalam kegiatan preventive maintenance untuk dapat secara cepat menentukan lokasi perawatan dengan tepat. Hasil yang dihasilkan dari teknologi drone ini melebihi ekspektasi kami sebelumnya, dan kami merasa bahwa implementasi teknologi drone ini akan menjadi standar industri ke depannya. Dan Pertamina IP berkomitmen untuk dapat selalu menjadi yang terdepan dalam menggunakan teknologi, teknologi baru untuk meningkatkan efisiensi, safety, dan juga produksi. All right, so thank you very much, Pa'ata. I'm just going to show one more um, reference video here from Pa Eric from the same team, and then I'm going to pass it over to Johannes to present further about some of the applications on, on the tank I mentioned earlier. Pertamina Jaya. Penggunaan teknologi drone untuk membantu kegiatan inspeksi tangki secara internal dan eksternal sangat memudahkan kami untuk dapat menghasilkan data yang dengan cepat dan akurat. Kegiatan perawatan ini biasanya akan sangat memakan waktu lama dan biaya yang tinggi bagi kami. Tentunya dengan risiko bahaya dari kegiatan kerja pada area ketinggian. Pertama NEP dan khususnya AC3 sangat tertarik untuk menjadi yang pertama dan memimpin penggunaan teknologi terbaru dikarenakan potensinya untuk dapat mengubah kegiatan yang riskan dan mahal menjadi kegiatan yang lebih aman dan efisien. Oke, okay, hi everyone, and thank you for the kind introduction, Eli, and thank you to our partner at Pertamina for the testimonials. Reintroducing myself, uh, I'm Johannes with Hello Robotics, and in the coming slides, I will show you some samples of the work that we have done with Pertamina before for the tank uh, work that Eli has mentioned before. Uh, in this project specifically, we, are, we were using the DJI Matrix 200 series integrated with the Amazon Hover Map LiDAR sensor. Just to give a brief uh, introduction of the uh, project itself, this is the tank that previously was mentioned by Eli. And this tank actually uh, the second biggest in Indonesia, which has the size of 66,000 cubic meter. So that's a giant asset right there. And uh, can imagine uh, for the maintenance activities that um, associated with this uh, kind of like big asset, it will be it it will be a high budget activity related to that so uh we also were working for another tank which is uh, 37000 cubic meter in size and we were working on that project from starting from uh, january uh, early this year up to the march uh, last month we just finished so i'm just going to show you right away uh, some examples and uh, results from the <clears throat> another tank that we have worked on So as you can see here, uh, originally we were doing also an inspection for the tank that we mentioned before, and 
you can see here that in order to do that, we uh, would be seeing the, the as built drawing of the tank itself first. And on the left side, we can see here that the original as built drawing was uh, actually made in 1973. And that was a long time ago, and it's still being used up until today, actually. So imagine to uh, make a comprehensive aspect drawing like this for a big tank, uh, 37,000 cubic meter will take a long time to actually have a precise aspect drawings. And then you imagine that there will be a lot of like uh, revisions and then a lot of papers flying here and there. And some papers would be like uh, missing and then uh, stuff like that. So on the right side, it's what it's, it's the, the data that we have gathered uh, with the LiDAR sensor externally and internally as well. So then we can see here that the then and now of the as build. <clears throat> um, currently the, the tank, uh, it's called tank tree by the way, and the tank tree is also already undergoing a full overhaul maintenance and reparation because Pertamina is um, always committed to continuous improvement and maintaining their assets in good condition. So. Actually, the full on overhaul is uh, in progress right now, and we actually support in one scope, which is the inspection and the, as, uh, the, the renewal of the as built drawing. So, as, you, as we can see on the right here, uh, this is a 3D interactive uh, data, uh, which we can actually you know, rotate over in the software, and then uh, we basically can extract some layers, like shown on the top bottom right corner. So I'm going to show more uh, data that we can extract uh, after this slide. And this is just to show how we did the acquisition at the time. Actually, to gather this accurate um, as-built and 3D modeling is just it took us for one working active day. So the, specific, uh, the specifics here you can see, just one drone flight with 11 minutes in total, and that can be easily done by uh, DJI Matrix 210 integrated with the Amazon Hover Map LiDAR. And then what's interesting is that our sensor actually can uh, be used handheld wise. So we can see here in this picture that we can actually carry the, the LiDAR and to do a, a handheld LiDAR scanning. So then we can get the, a good data also internally as well. And some of the areas that the drone wouldn't be able to fly can be covered perfectly by the uh, handheld uh, method. So also the, the processing uh, also not taking not so long. So we can see on the bottom left corner here is the one part of the post-processing that we did on site with a working laptop. Basically, this is a cloud compare software that we use. This software is specifically for uh, cleaning up the point clouds and also, you know, uh, giving a good filter and the uh, coloring and everything else to basically make this end result uh, of the tank scan. So this is the side view of the tank. We can see here easily accessible um, later in that day, and then we directly can cover, can see and can measure the external part of it. And also we can go inside uh, on the bottom right corner, the image is shown the internal part of the tank, which is showing the roof support beams. And even without the measurement tools, you can see directly that some beams are actually not straight. So, so uh, directly can be accessible. So this kind of data will be uh, very beneficial to the asset uh, managers and also to the contractors that's doing the maintenance because they directly have an accurate data that can be um, that can uh, be repetitive actually. So you can, because it's quick, you can repeat the process like every day or every week to actually do a change detection. <clears throat> Some more data, this is a top, uh, top few data from the tank itself. We can see here the roof, uh, external roof, and then we can extract that data. And in the middle image, we can see that it is the top side view from the internal view, uh, we can clearly see the rafters, the girders, and everything else uh, with an accurate data. So this is a centimeter accuracy level data. And moving on to the bottom right uh, corner of the image, this is the bottom view. So you can see that the points here, the blue points are actually the 
roof support points that and then finally we can extract the all that data and then we based on that raw data we can actually make uh, an as built uh, first stage of as built drawing and the top right corner uh, this is what our team at hello robotics basically just split into four quarter and then you know we can basically name each area with uh, each coding and then later on we can also uh, name the plating and the plates and the roof and you know the measurements and all that basically replacing the old method that we've shown before in the second slide we basically can quickly and easily and also accurately get uh, get uh, accurate and good data and um, this is the the new method that we think will be the the new standard going forward for as built drawings so of course to increase efficiency and precision of the maintenance planning uh, and you know the people involved in the maintenance can decide correctly uh, reduce the inconsistencies as well you know because pertamina is working with many contractors not just one or just two for this whole maintenance project it's a big project so then with a good data like this uh, definitely can help to reduce uh, errors in the process and also increase efficiency and safety uh, speaking further about this um, a data that we gathered actually this this quarter three quarter four the 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 first phase as built that we did that we made actually we found out that originally we were working for an inspection project uh, in the internal part of the tank it is using another drone that uh, we do a full on ins visual inspection close visual inspection using thermal and um, RGB high resolution camera to detect anomalies and then uh, even though this is already decided by Pertamina before that the, the they will basically uh, do a full overhaul maintenance project and we we supported in providing more data on what what the situation looked like inside uh, with a drone you know from 1973s and uh, right now being done a full maintenance we can provide a better picture on that but usually the most difficult thing is to refer uh, do a reference or link the the photos of the inspection to link that with the actual positioning in this huge tank is a is a massive problem like the inspector has to really uh hand write or you know make a make a mark in the in the area to really link those two now we found out that this lidar data that we also have actually really helps in in linking the inspection data inspection result to the area and the area is directly uh, taken from the accurate data that we provided with the lidar sensor so that's really interesting and it's it's a it's a really an, a high value activity that we that we think it's it's really good that <clears throat> is systematic management and also inspection of aging assets so we believe also that uh, many aging assets brownfields in uh, indonesia will have the the uh, uh, about the same uh, problem like old drawings and stuff like that so <clears throat> moving on so zooming out to the broader view uh, zooming out to a broader view of uh, use cases for a lidar uh, sensors that can be attached in the dji drones easily is actually to also support in like epc and construction project like we see here uh, you know the communication tower examples in the top right we can easily uh, get the picture that you know if you want to do a full-on a new construction or an upgrade to a to an asset you know it's a having a lidar scan or having a 3d model it's it's much easier because that can be integrated to a bim as well and the software you know like uh, our uh, the amazon format basically the lidar can extract the data to cat uh, file format so easily can be accessible by any kind of cat uh, software out there that being used uh, widely in the in the multi-sector and multi-industry so to name a few like AutoCAD and other software is in, you know you can easily export the files to to uh, those softwares and also on the on the top left we can see here this is a project that we did together with Pertamina Hulu Mahakam as well for the uh, pipeline LiDAR uh, mapping that we can see here basically uh, we want to see uh, the data up an updated data because because pipelines in indonesia there's like soil and seismic change uh, regularly and then we want to detect like landslide analysis also showing like the top top bottom corner an example here from a power line uh, or 
you know you can relate that and you can see that there's a pipeline uh, just beside the power line there it's also for the vegetation encroachment which is also a problem that we want to uh, this is called the right of way management and we want to make sure that you know this this kind of technology really can help in maintaining the asset uh, brownfield assets so you know you keep keeping clear of like uh, landslide landslide or any other object that can basically uh, uh, give damage to the asset itself so very easy uh, you know repeatable compatible scans and you know and we were happy to work with Pertamina to provide this uh, data as well and I think from my end I would like to also say uh, thank you to everyone here and thank you to DGI for the opportunity to speak in this uh, webinar and Special thanks, of course, to Pertamina EP Asset Tree, and special thanks to Pertamina Upstream Technology Center, also Pertamina Hulu Mahakam that has been uh, working with us and uh, from 2018 uh, up until now. So, if you have further questions, uh, feel free to reach Eli or me uh, in our contacts shown in the screen, and also there's a, will be a Q and A later on, and uh, I'll also be sharing uh, moving my Moving the presentation back to Alex, uh, there's still some uh, materials. So thank you very much and stay safe out there, everyone. Okay. Sorry, sorry, I just mute. Um, let me go back to this slide. And actually, in the future, we will cooperate with more and more oil and gas industrial in different um, stream, like the upstream, oil field, middle stream, and downstream. And we will figure out more and more application and verifying the value creation of this kind of application so that we can make up a workflow and we can make drone be a daily use tool. And actually there are a lot of um, targets we need to finish in the future for North American signed a guide from API showed us we need to figure out the remote ID and checking, UTM, uh, and BVLAS regulation and also operations over people and this kind of regulation. And for the op application side, we need to figure out the long range pipeline over flight for inspection in North America. Actually, this has already done in China. So DJI will copy this experience to globally. So what about the DJI Enterprise product in the future? Actually, we will build up a maintenance uh, system, including a health management system in our brand new DJI Enterprise product, products in the future. And we will upgrade the IP rating, the flight time, and we will keep the transmission distance and make it better in the future. And also maybe with the transmission relayer in the future, and also we will build up a new payload with higher resolution RGB camera and we will integrate multi-sense uh, maybe including the thermal camera, RGB camera and RGB zoom camera at the same payload and it will be really light in the future. And for the control, so let's that. For the control feature side, we will have the dual, real dual control system so that we can take off from A place and land into B place so that we can fly a longer and longer distance in pipeline inspection. And for the construct reconstruction side, actually we are optimizing 
optimizing our calculation. We can see in 2018, 19, and 20, and right now, we can use our DJI Terra with Phantom 4 RTK, and maybe even in the future, we can use another drones with higher resolution and the lens, long lens to capture more details of the uh, assessment so that we can get more detail 2D or 3D models, like we can get this kind of tank models so that we can do some assessed management in digitalization. And all of these features, we will be, we will get the software development kit for our system integrator, the partner, so that they can integrate to their solutions. And for the data security side, we are really take a high responsibility and take a lot of development college in science to make the transmission between the drone to remote controller, the data transmission encrypted by AES-256. And also we ha have built up a password protection for internal storage, like Ma Mavic to Enterprise. And in our private edition, software including the DJI Pilot private edition and the Flight Hub private edition. It can block all data exchange if we do not open it. And it's not known it's no need for DJI account in that private edition and do not need a um, firmware update connection, flight safety data update connection, and even the map download connection. So that will be a real data security. So your business is not DJI's business means uh, the data is customer's data is not DJI. And also in the production inspection side, we can, sorry, just give it too fast. Yeah, and actually we can see In the production, like the refinery inspection side, when we use drone to inspect the player, right now we need to manual control the drone. But in the future, we can record all these control and flight automatically and adjust the gimbal roll and the zoom at the same time. And we will give the AI technology to make the drone and the gimbal camera can capture ultimately and zoom target to the position we want. And also we will develop the offline mission with Terra and so that we can plan the mission in Terra in 3D model. For the leak detection and repair solution as we know u.s environment protection agency started the leakage detection and repair in 1980 and set the method 21 s as the voc detection method and until 2012 epa and api proposed the smart lidar technology using infrared gas camera we call OGI as the inspection method. But I suppose in the future, we we can integrate multi-sensor, including TDLAS technology, OGI technology, and even PID or ca elect chemical technology into one payload so that we can fly the drones with integrated payload and survey facility, and then we can get OGI camera detect and visualize gas leaks. And then we can use TDLAS laser methane detection to amelimate spin and measure absorption level. And finally, we can possess data to identify and qualify the concentration. So that's maybe in the past, next 10 years, we, we can do in the oil and gas leak detection and repair UAS solution. For the pipeline integrate integrity management, we can build up a workflow of the pipeline inspection 
So actually in China, we have a writing write down the workflow because the, uh, in China, there is no BVLAS uh, regulation so that uh, it's easier to push this kind of lab application as a daily use. So actually in a long distance pipeline in China, we cooperate with uh, Sinopec that uh, they use the drone inspect the pipeline every day. So they they can inspect more than 6,000 kilometers far pipeline every day by using our drone. So we can use drone as a quarter 2D map application and daily mission inspection. And also we can digital management and analysis of the pipeline. We can use like a GIS ground information system and integrate it into this kind of pipeline solution. And actually we can build up a 2D capture, reconstruction and upload method and in within two, six mi minutes per kilometers so that we can quickly get the 2D map by using DJI technology. So about the regulation signed, as we all know, there's a BB loss regulation in US, but I believe in the future, um, we can get more and more certification of beyond visual range blind in North America. And in China, actually there is also a UTMIS um, system that to need to get the low altitude authorization. And in the future, DJI product will have the lens technology, a lens certification integrated with, with our software. So how can we upgrade our UAS program if we already have drones in our oil and gas company? How can we use them? So we need to Think about the business model depends on the application and the company environment. Which kind of the application should be the center service and which kind should be the local service. And the strong maturity and weak maturity make us to decision. This kind of situation should be internal. I suggested is the high automation solution, low equipment investment and easy to learn. And when we inspect high frequency. For example, in China, uh, we need to inspect the oil pipeline twice a time. So in that kind of application, we may, maybe we need to run this solution internally in oil and gas company. And there's a high data security requirement. Maybe we need to run this internal. So, for the external, it's difficult to operate and high equipment if investment and low frequency of use, maybe we can buy the service. So that's uh, the suggestion of how we upgrade uh, UAS program in business model. And about the solution, how we select them, we need to figure out what kind of application we really need in our oil and gas company, such as the daily inspection, emergency response, leak detection, and reconstruction. And then we can figure out what kind of the hardware and software we need to select. And then we can build up a regulation, mission planning, get a pipe inspection and data upload workflow. We and finally, we can integrate this kind of data monitoring fleet management airspace, airspace permission and into a big general system. And what about the teamwork? I mean, if we use our drone, we can separate to the basic pilot. They, they are easy to use our drone. They, they just need to power on our drone and tap the mission stop so that that will be easier to do the internal UAS program and the captain just need to test planning and team management and data review. So our administrator can get all the information in the control center. 
So, and DJI has already built up an ecosystem with DJI uh, Enterprise UAS Solution SDK. So our system in integrator can use Palo SDK to integrate, it, integrate the professional device into our drone platform. And then we can integrate the onboard edge computing and the onboard sensor like the uh, SLAM technology into our drone. And back to the ground controller, we have the mobile SDK that we can develop our application uh, with the uh, system integrator and use our UX SDK. And also we have the PC software DJI Terra and we will have the Windows SDK that can create the Windows software and even, and also we have the web management system flight hub and we have the API of this flight hub so that the system integrator no need to develop a lot of basic um, software function of our drone. They just need to develop base our drone basic function and then can create oil and gas application um, on, on it. So finally, we will contribute to the oil and gas productivity too. So at last, I will share two case study with you. One is our Saudi Aramco. Actually, we have already cooperated with Saudi Aramco staff from 2018. And Saudi Aramco mainly engaged in oil exploration, development, production, revenue, transportation, and sales. It has the world's largest onshore and offshore oil and oil fields. And after the Saudi Aramco used US it creates more than 1.2 million USD value creation. And they have the professional robot team and is really do a lot of job of how to use drone to patrol, detect emergency, wildlife surveillance and security patrol. And actually there are more than 20 to 30 drones in Saudi Aramco used in daily. And there's another case study I need to share is about the Sinopec oil field in the Northwest. They have more than 182 OGM and more than 50,000 kilometer gathering pipeline. And the fields are really large and the environment is complex, including the Gobi disaster, forest, river, cotton field and villages. So the social environment sensitivity is really high and is corrosive environment. So they use our drone like the uh, left of this part. They can take off from one OGM and cover all the well connect to the OGM because the, the distance between the well to the OGM is less than seven kilometers. So just one phantom series drone can cover all the well one day. So after we start from this project in 2015 and until now in one year 2018 found more than 1,400 issues like the leakage construction and rebel but it's not a big leakage just a uh, just some a uh, little part because our drone can find out this kind of is really quick we increase the frequency because in the past if they want to inspect all the pipeline need to cost more than 10 days to inspect once a time of all the pipeline but after use drones they can inspect all the pipeline one day in one day so actually in 2018, they have already used drone covered more than 25 kilometer, 250,000 kilometers far pipeline. And actually the uh, efficiency we have already calculated their time 10 times more than manual when using 
UAS to inspect the pipeline. And we can increase the frequency of the inspection. So that's all information I want to share with you today. I hope this kind of information and outlook can, can help us to make every oil and gas company start and up, upgrade UAS program. So I will get back the screen sharing to Toby. Thank you so much, everyone, for Hey everyone. I hope I can, hope I can you can hear me and coming in coming through clearly. Again. Um so we have some time now for some questions and answer, um, some QA. And one of the most common questions we had uh overall was how is how will I get a copy of this recording? Is this being recorded? Uh We'll also send you an email that will have a link to that will have a link to uh, that you can download this recording. So um, that's the best way to get it. Um, now we have some questions uh, about um, one. Another question we had was, what is the optimal flight altitude to obtain high resolution data? And for vertical visual ins for inspection, was there a minimum height to be flown over structures when you're considering magnetic interference? So I'm opening this up to our panelists. Um, uh, okay, so for the, um, I think the first question was about the optimal flight altitude to obtain uh, high resolution data. So this is uh, Johanna speaking, by the way. So for the Phantom 4 RTK RGB mapping, basically the optimal is in between 60 meter to 100 meter. So in that flight altitude, basically we can get a high resolution RGB uh, GSD data and also a good accuracy for the base station of the RTK to actually give a, a, an accurate centimeter, a sub five centimeter accuracy of the map itself. And then for the, I think for the electromagnetic uh, interference, I think DJI drones uh, has this lineup of uh, RTK drones. Basically, the Phantom 4 RTK that we use is also a real-time kinematic base station equipped, and also the DJI Matrix uh, 200 series, which is mostly commonly used for inspection, is also using uh, RTK technology so there's there's no problem with the electromagnetic because the rtk will actually uh, get the gps data communicate directly to the satellite and then to the drone so the drone is not directly communicating with the satellites so that's the i think we have tested with the non rtk as well in the high kv power line and dji drones are proven to be uh, anti magnetic interference okay All right, so thank you, Hannes, for that response. Uh, we had another question about, a couple questions about LIDAR, and specifically during some of the as-built modeling, uh, which LIDAR solutions were, were Pertamina and Halo using, and then gen more generally about LIDAR payloads and DJI drones. Can you, is this, yeah. Yeah, this is, a, this is an interesting question, and, um, uh, so this is Eli from Halo Robotics speaking, and uh, thanks for the question. Thanks, thanks guys for the webinar. Uh, the Emerson hover map 
was the first UAV LiDAR payload developed to be plug and play with DJI drones. So that's the M200 series and M600 series enterprise drones. And um, there are other LiDARs that have now become compatible with DJI drones. Another popular survey LiDAR is Green Valley International. And, and that's widely used by by at least in Indonesia, it's widely used for survey lidar and um, and and has been used in the oil and gas industry. But what makes the but for for facilities and small area high risk environments where you and especially in electromagnetic um, environments where you have acid intensive activities, um, what makes the Emerson hover map? really unique is that it's not just a high spec lidar um, but it's also that on the back end there is sort of an ai you could call it the the autonomy side of it and that's really what emiscent has developed is the is that the sensor is becoming the eyes of the drone and so just the same way when you sit down at your desk you don't crash into your desk your eyes allow you to localize yourself as a human in three-dimensional space this is the same kind of technology that uh, the Emerson hover map gives to the, the drone. So at the same time that it's achieving, you know, very 300,000 points per second. So astonishingly accurate LIDAR scanning, but it's also basically effectively taking over the brain power of the drone so that it's able to navigate in high risk, um, acid intensive, electromagnetic environments uh, and avoid obstacles and something that Amazon's also developing you know it's a key focus of the company to to develop a cap capability of navigating autonomously fully autonomously that's the next level um, so what they call quote unquote autonomy level two and that's something that uh, we can look out for in future it's an orientation in general in robotics so, you know uh, Tesla's doing this with self-driving cars and uh, what's really exciting is that that's really unlocked for drones uh, an ability to be used in these asset intensive environments uh, whereas you know lidar itself is 30 40 years old uh, it's not necessarily in and of itself new, but what is new is the ability uh, that it is, um, you know, user-friendly, plug-and-play with DJI drones, and actually can be used because it's got this autonomy capability. It can be used to scan and generate as-built models of of traditionally what has been inaccessibly high-risk structures. All right. So thank you so much for that, Eli. Um, we're actually just about out of time. Um, so for any questions that we we couldn't answer, um, we have um, our panelists contact information up on the slide on the slide. Um, and again, for anyone who didn't um, who didn't uh, catch it earlier, we're gonna be sending these slides or not these slides. We're gonna be sending a recording of this webinar <laughs> via, via email to you guys. Um, so you can catch up and share it yourself and review um, as well. So um, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in today. Um, this was really great, I think. Um, thank you so much, Alex, Eli, and Johannes, for all the effort you guys put into this. All right. So everyone, please stay safe and have a great rest of your day and a good weekend.